The population is in the verge of extinction. But when you are poisoning actually animal, you might not know that you are poisoning the entire nation. We have eight species of vultures in Kenya. And just to mention a few, we have a lapid faced vulture, rappel's vulture, hooded vultures, white backed, white headed. We have Egyptian vultures too. And among those ones within Kenya, four of the species are critically endangered. We have four species of vultures which inhabit the Mara because they are tree nesting vultures here in the Mara. So this is a white backed, white headed, lapid faced and uh, hooded vultures and among those ones all the, all the rest uh, especially the rappel vulture is one which nests on cliffs and mainly from Hell's Gate and Quenya, Quenya cliffs and further north in, in, in Samburu area. To me vultures are not only equal but probably they are more than important than the other animals because they dictate the parameters of life. But the phenomena in the Kenyan conservation spheres is that uh, people are focused from time immemorial on marketing the big five. People do not know that the qualities of environment are dictated by the variety of species that are, are available in the ecosystem. And one very important indicator is the presence of birds, and particularly the vultures. We've given them a, a term in bird life, we call them the cleanup crew. So they're the ones that go out and do the, the, dirty, the dirty work that nobody else wants to do. They clean up the carcasses and, and by doing that they're sort of not necessarily preventing but they're controlling uh, the spread of, you know, diseases. Uh, diseases like rabies, diseases like botulism, um, to a certain extent anthrax. So things like that. So that's one of their functions. With vultures, it takes one to two hours to completely clean up a carcass, whereas without it, it could take several days. And what are the consequences of that, um, you know, to, to livestock and, and to people, particularly relevant for the Masai Mara, where you've got seasonal migrations and lots of die-offs. And if you didn't have the vultures there, you'd have lots of carcasses and lots of, um, you know, potential for disease transmission between uh, species and also within a kind of ecosystem. So within rivers, you might have a lot of um, and you think about who are the end users of that water. Vultures, actually, uh, they are very important on this ecosystem because most of them they, they actually they eat diseases so ile mnyama labda imekufa kwa ajili ya kama anthrax hakuna mnyama mwingine anaweza kula anthrax ni vulture tu ndiye anaweza clean hiyo hiyo mali hiyo mnyama imekufia what we are seeing is somewhat of a of a global trend um, in terms of vulture declines and, and it was really first noticed and started in Asia, um, particularly in India where, you know, the gyp species um, declined by over 97%, um, in some cases up to 99%. And now here in Africa we're seeing similar um, drastic declines in our species. One of the biggest threats now within Kenya now is issues to do with indiscriminate uh, poisoning of wildlife which eventually affect vultures. Uh, so poisoning within Kenya has been recorded as a main threat causing almost 60% of the decline of vultures within Kenya. Carnivores raid pastoralist livestock. The pastoralists get disgruntled by the loss of their livestock to lions and they lease the carcasses of the dead livestock in anticipation that the lion will come back and eat the carcass and then eventually die. But due to the use of these poisonous substances, the lions do eat the carcass, they do die from this, from this poisoning, 
but when as long as vultures come in to the carcasses both of the li of the dead lion or the dead cow which has been laced with poison that effect kills multiple other species including vultures and other scavenging species so our nyama kiona mostly nyama kama lions na ndovu na nyati huwa sana wanaharibu kama ndovu na simba huwa sana wanazuzuru hasa kwa wanyama wetu lakini na kama nyati pia wasingine kwa wanadamu ama kwa wakati kama huu ngombe wameenda malishoni wanaenda ku kuwashambulia tunaona tukipata simba imekamata ngombe hiyo simba labda wasewa kikimbilia hiyo simba anakimbia lakini unajua hao kiondoka atarudiwa ama fisi wanaweka sumu sasa tunaona wapati hapa wanaweka sumu nakuta wanyama kama visi wanarudia kwa ile mnyama sasa sio ule mmoja tu ule mmoja ni mmoja alikuwa ameua ngombe ngombe ni mmoja amekufa lakini nakuta wanyama karibu 200 wamekufa juu hiyo mmoja let me zero into the mara ecosystem or the landscapes of Kenya if today you poison a cow and a cow is eaten by either hyenas or, uh, or dogs and then the pollutant drains into the streams and you know all of us do not get pipe water this is a, a developing country or third world country so a very innocent kenyans in the countryside draw water from the wells and the rivers and as a result you you will get poisoning or you get actually people getting funny diseases take for instance when you have the migration of wild beast here we have at least 1.5 to 2 million wild beast migrating every during the migratory uh, season and with that it brings about lions which come and kill the wildebeest for food so there's a lot of deaths of wildebeest because it's a great source of food for multiple species and if there's no one to clean up after the lions and after the other big cats which kill the the wildebeest there will be a stench you'd expect like if there's an abattoir or a slaughterhouse so if there are no scavenging species like vultures to clean up this place would be let's say un un uninhabitable uh per se and uh and that 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 would not make Masai Mara to be as attractive as it is now 2015 bird life has kind of um started a campaign to to look at vulture conservation and and really the first thing was to kind of spread awareness you know at a global level of the plight of of african vultures um and also to answer some of the questions that people don't really understand or they don't know why vultures you know people think vultures ugh ugly things why why should we care trying to encourage governments to take the issue seriously looking at uh, enforcement of policy looking at the policy itself um looking at the regulations stricter regulations of the chemicals and pesticides which are often implicated in these sort of um human wildlife conflict poisoning incidents um and also engaging with local community and explaining to them and making making that link between community well-being community health and um vulture health and well-being making sure that there's a system for responding rapidly to poisoning events as and when they occur so one of the things we've been doing as you've probably heard for the mara is developing um a, a protocol so that kws or whoever it is who has the legal responsibility to respond can do this in a standard way in an effective way if you don't contain the site you could end up with this sort of spiral of species being poisoned you know from each other while i've considered that it's really changed the dynamics of economics in africa not only for the mass of people but across the globe for those of you who like court the revenue generation that is earned by kenya and tanzania today i think the serengeti alone So at the moment we have done quite a number of trainings here in the Masai Mara and mainly to do with um training the conservancy managers and the county responsible persons of the Masai Mara reserve and also government uh, officers under the Kenya Wildlife Service we have trained them on how to respond uh to poisoning incidences so issues to do with how to identify if it's a poisoning incident um 
and what measures you need to take to to handle that 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 scene including issues to do to decontaminating the scene <laughs> The next component is training the community to appreciate the importance of vultures into the ecosystem. Uh, the pastoralists here do not ideally target the vultures to kill them on purpose. Their main problem is the human carnivore conflict or human lion conflict. So if we are able to, to ensure that we mitigate that conflict through improved mechanisms of uh, reducing like raiding of lions into 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 homesteads or killing of livestock and advocating for speedy compensation from the government if all this is taken into consideration and implemented the vultures will not get impacted upon due to human wildlife conflict the community do appreciate the importance of, of vultures but they still more to be to be shown of why they are important to them as a species. Sa hiyo wanyama ni wenu si wa serikali ama so ukienda nyumbani ukikutana na mnyama usione kama ni ni kitu mbaya. Mnyama ikiua we been uh, engaging in several activities in schools. Uh, one taking school kids to to the park to experience what how beautiful how they are, how lucky are they to be somewhere within uh, where they can get to know the species uh, around the park. We introduce uh, wildlife films in schools, so that creates the empathy by showing the kids the, the wildlife films, how important are they, how good the wildlife is. The sentiment of your skies. For centuries I was revered, for I am vital. And thereafter, we, 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 we talk to them, interrogate to them, to write stories about the experiences, uh, which is their best animals. So through that program, we're able to, to create another generation of uh, conservationists. And like a few months ago, we, we found a, a vulture who was sick, actually. We, we found struggling. We call out for support from uh, vet team and Mara Lion and uh, Nature Kenya and uh, the, the Marshall Project. So when we were engaging the community, like they were asking, what is so important with this bird that now you guys are not even uh, sitting down, you, you are all over looking for support for this bird. So we had to, to talk to them, we had to explain to them how important is, is the vultures are to our lives and the ecosystem. There is quite some tremendous change in terms of uh, you know, how the communities perceive uh, predators at the moment. Because if you move outside the, the Masai Mara National Reserve, there is about 17 conservancies that surround the National Reserve, and these are all community conservancies. The community members do get a lot of benefit from these conservancies, and it is basically because of uh, tourism, and the tourism is based on wildlife. So there is quite a lot of improvement in terms of how people perceive uh, wildlife in the area and it, it's basically because of the income they are getting from the wildlife. With this new survey, what we want to determine is uh, poisoning hotspots. We have a quite very cool approach or technique that we are going to use to determine whether um, people do poison in that particular locality. But besides uh, doing the interviews or the, the service, we are also putting GSM units or satellite transmitters on 10 birds and then we determine their movement. So we can be able to correlate what people say in terms of uh, you know, identifying hotspot areas from the interviews and uh, the, the, the mortality of these birds. Hapo awali ndio walikuwa wanatumia sana sana lakini ngawaje tumekuja sasa tumekuwa pamoja na Mara Lion. Step ya kwanza ni kujulisha hawa wahusika. Kitu ya pili tunafanya tunajaribu ku encourage wase ama tunajaribu ku encourage wa familia ama kijamii kuwa na fences. Kwenye wanasunguka kama vile unaona kwa hizi maboma tunaweka hiyo wiring alafu tunaweka hiyo nyingine juu juu. Hizi majani juu juu ili at least wanyama wakiwa usiku hakuna mnyama atasawaingililia. Lakini kwenye tunajaribu kufanya ni kusia watu wasiue maana tunajua hapa Masemara hatuwezi lima hatuna ukulima hatuna njia nyingine ya kupata nini 
hiyo income ni kwa wanyama tu tunapatanga sasa wanajua watalii wanakuja kuangalia wanyama pamoja na kututembelea sasa unakuta venye watalii wanakuja kututembelea hapo awali hatukua tunajua ndege huu hata hawa ndege wanaleta watalii Kenya tulikuwa tunajua tu ni wao wanyama especially hao watano wakubwa lakini venye tunakuwa na interact na hao wanakuja mpaka hapa wanatuelezea venye hata huko nje wa kupata wanyama tunakuja oh kumbe hata ndege huwa tuna, tuna inatufaidi sasa tukaingilia tukajua ndege pia huwa na sehemu ya yenye inatusaidia it's no deliberate action from government really when we say wildlife conservation you see the focus is uh, anti poaching so you see a whole paramilitary training on both the government of Kenya Kenya wildlife Search, and even the community conservancies but i don't think there is a deliberate action on really synchronizing what are those animals and birds that are vulnerable it's very critical for us to map la do landscape management plans so that we may identify the critical habitats for not only wildlife in terms of the big angulates but also our birds vultures are very very critical creatures they are beautiful birds of the sky uh, they they do a lot of work for for humanity that we cannot we are not able to to pay in in any amount of money mbaka tu tushikane mikono tuangalie kama tuta tutaambia watu wasiweke sumu hiyo tu ndio tunayasafanya ndio watu waelewe elewe ya kwamba hii hii mandege ni mzuri wanakula hiyo sumu eh, wanakula hiyo hiyo ugonjwa na hiyo tu ndio tunayasafanya raising the profile not only of lions but of other critically endangered species is very important poison is indiscriminately kill species across board and if you do not raise the profile of this species or the effect of poisoning there it, it becomes a big problem in the future uh, if we do not respond adequately.